On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Jakaya Mauricio Kikwiti, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Madam Deputy Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate you, Mr. President, on your well-deserved election as President of the 66th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. My delegation has full confidence in you, and we assure you of our full support and cooperation. I thank and congratulate our predecessor, His Excellency Joseph Dice, for very ably steering the affairs of the 65th session. A lot has been achieved, which I have no doubt you will consolidate and advance. Allow me also to take this opportunity to extend my heartfelt congratulations to our illustrious Secretary General, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, on his well-deserved second mandate. His re-election reaffirms the trust that we have in him and in his leadership skills. It is also a recognition of his dedicated service to the United Nations and humanity as a whole. Once again, I congratulate and welcome the newest member of the United Nations family, the Republic of South Sudan, and assure them of Tanzania's continued friendship and cooperation. Mr. President, this year, the United Republic of Tanzania, which is a union between two sovereign states, the Republic of Zanzibar, the People's Republic of Zanzibar and the Republic of Tanganyika will be celebrating 50 years of independence of Tanganyika. We, we will also be celebrating 50 years of our membership of the United Nations. I stand before you today, 50 years later, to reiterate that that same faith in and that same commitment to the United Nations as expressed by the founders of our dear nation. I'm proud that Tanzania has remained faithful to the ideals of the United Nations and a proactive, a proactive member of this august body. We promise to say the cause for the next 50 years and beyond. Mr. President, the people of Tanzania are happy to have had the opportunity to contribute the, in the maintenance of peace and security in Africa and other parts of the world. We've always believed that mediation conflict prevention, and pacific settlement of disputes are the best means of resolving conflicts. As a result, Tanzania has been in the forefront of mediation efforts to resolve conflicts in the countries around us and in our region and elsewhere on the continent. Our country also has been contributing troops, police, correction officers, and civilian personnel in the UN mission, peacekeeping missions and through regional and sub-regional arrangements. We promise to continue to do so wherever asked and whenever asked to do so. But more importantly, we are humbled to have had the rare opportunity of pioneering efforts together with Denmark, which led to the establishment of the Peace Building Commission in 2006. Mr. President, we are also proud in the 50 years of our membership of the UN to have had the opportunity to contribute to the decolonization of Africa and other parts of the world. At independence, the founding father of our nation, the late Malim Julius Nyerere said, the independence of our country was incomplete until all, until all countries in Africa were free. This guided Tanzania to strongly oppose all forms of colonialism, apartheid, and racial discrimination on the African continent and elsewhere. It also informed our resolve, our resolve to help our brothers and sisters fighting for their independence and freedom in Africa. We had the honor of hosting the headquarters of the African Liberation Committee in Dar es Salaam until colonialism, apartheid, and minority rule had been dismantled. We gave sanctuary as well as moral and material support to almost all the liberation movements of Southern Africa. Here at the United Nations, Tanzania was afforded the rare honor of chairing the UN Special Committee on Decolonization from 1972 
1980. This was the critical phase in the decolonization of Africa and the struggle against apartheid and minority rule. It is heartwarming indeed to see our efforts, sacrifices and contributions having been rewarded so handsomely with the independence of all African countries and apartheid having been dismantled in South Africa. Only Western Sahara remains outstanding. I hope the United Nations will expedite the process so that the people of Saharawi can determine their future peacefully. Mr. President, we believed at independence, and we still believe now and always that all human beings are born equal and deserve equal pursuit and protection of their civil, political, economic, and social and, uh, and cultural rights, as outlined in what has now become the International Bill of Rights. This guides what we are doing at home with regards to promoting democracy, rule of law, human rights, including personal freedoms, including freedoms of expression. It is in this spirit also that I, will, I wish to reaffirm our solidarity with the Palestinian people in their rightful quest for an independent homeland. Our plea is for the fulfillment of the vision of two states, the state of Israel, and a sovereign, independent, democratic, and viable state of Palestine living side, side, side by side in peace and harmony. That is why we also remain in full solidarity with the people of Cuba in demanding the end to the embargo. It is perhaps the longest lasting embargo in history. The people in these three countries, Israel, Palestine, and Cuba, have suffered for too far too long it is time their burdens are eased for their, from their shoulders. Our other goal was, and still is, the attainment of African unity. We believe, in the strength, we believe in the strength of unity for us to be able to effectively face up to and overcome the daunting political, security, and development challenges facing our continent. It is in pursuit of this ideal that on 26 of April 1964, Zanzibar and Tanganyika merged to form the United Republic of Tanzania. We will never tire in our efforts towards the realization of the dream of the founding fathers of the United States of Africa. However, we are mindful of the fact that this will be a, a gradual process, and regional economic integration and regional groupings will be at its foundation and the, and the building block. Mr. President, after 50 years of independence and 50 years of our membership of the United Nations, Tanzania remains a firm believer in the indispensability of multilateralism. It is through multilateralism that we can bring all nations and therefore all peoples together to shape their common present and future and that of the world they live in. It is through multilateralism that peace and development will be guaranteed for all nations through the pursuit of common values. It is for these reasons that I believe the United Nations is relevant today as it was 66 years ago. It is for the same reason that the world needs the other multilateral institutions for global economic, social, and political governance. Mr. President, despite acknowledging the importance of various multilateral institutions, Tanzania is of the view that they need to undergo serious reforms to overcome the governance, the serious governance deficit within them. We need reforms that will make them more representative. In particular, reforms that will increase the voices of the developing nations. The original structures have ignored us. We should not allow this to continue. It is for this reason that Tanzania supported the calls for reforms of the Bretton Woods institutions, the United Nations, the WTO, and the other multilateral institutions. With regards to the United Nations, we should expedite the process of reforms of the, of the UN Security Council in both categories. And in the process include developing countries particularly those from Africa, Asia, 
in Latin America. It is sad to see that no serious progress has been made for close to two decades now. Now is the time for us to start serious negotiations, negotiate in earnest, and conclude at the earliest possible time. Mr. President, promoting development, particularly shared growth, has been one of the core functions of the United Nations. It is pleasing to note that the United Nations has remained steadfast in pursuit of this function through its agencies and through a number of initiatives undertaken by the UN quarters itself. UN leadership has always been noticeable. In all the major socio-economic challenges the world has been facing, sustainable development, climate change, health care, maternal health, child health, poverty, food security, education, etc., etc. This involvement in leadership underscores the relevance of the UN today and the UN tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. However, the good intentions of the UN have not succeeded fully. They have been met halfway because some of the developed countries have not met their commitments of allocating 0.7% of their GDP for overseas development assistance. Let me use this opportunity to join all those who spoke before me in repeating our appeal to developed countries to honor their commitments. I believe if this were done, would have been on target with the implementation of the MDGs and many other important global matters. I would also like to use this opportunity to thank and commend those few countries, developed countries that have kept the promise. May the examples of these countries inform and encourage others to do the same. Mr. President, we meet at a time of great uncertainties over the global economy. The economy is still weak, characterized by low growth in many, in many major economies, high levels of inflation, unemployment, increasing food and fuel practices, prices, and nervous financial markets. In a globalized world, ripples of economic and financial crisis in the developed economies affect all of us in the world. And for us, from poor developing countries, matters get even more complicated. As we all call for concerted global action to maintain economic stability and ensure that we do not head into another global recession, I appeal to the United Nations to remain seized of the situation and exercise its traditional leadership of our global issues. Mr. President, this is a matter of great concern to us in Africa, a continent that experienced extreme, extreme challenges and challenging economic, social, and political situations, but a continent that is now poised to go to the next level, from despair to hope and from lost decades to decades full of opportunities. Democracy is steadily on the march in Africa, and the Arab Spring has kept it all. Peace is reigning almost all over the continent. There are no serious conflict situations except for Somalia, where, where with serious involvement of the UN, the African Union, and the world community to resolve is still needed. All that Africa needs most now is continued support in building the institutions of democracy and governance, as well as support in building high economies and overcome the social challenges. Mr. President, among such social challenges that demand serious attention of this world body and the international community at large is the continued drought in the Horn of Africa and some countries of East Africa. The problem has not abated, and its consequences are momentous, as exemplified by the ongoing famine in Somalia. It is high time more attention is given to the situation in this part of Africa and this part of the world, for there is every sign or every reason to believe that the problem is escalating and involving more countries. Tanzania is already feeling the pressure of the crisis. Mr. President, piracy is the second problem in our part of the continent that I would like to mention here today. 
the problem of piracy still lingers on. And uh, it is, in fact, expanding. We are now witnessing more and more attacks taking place further south from Somalia. It used to be in the Gulf of Aden. Now the attacks are moving further south of Somalia. As far as Tanzania, Mozambique, the Comoros, and Madagascar. Since last year, when piracy activity moved to our territorial waters, 13 ships were attacked, and five of them were successfully hijacked. These attacks have caused an increase in the cost of shipping to our ports. If we don't succeed in stopping these attacks, they may disrupt shipping services and impact negatively on our economy. We need the support of the international community to help us build the capacity to fight piracy. We welcome your readiness to assist us improve our courts and prisons to try and punish the pirates. But if similar gesture was extended to build to us to build capacity to prevent attacks, there would be less pirates to bother us. Mr. President, controversies continue to prevent progress on the draft comprehensive convention on international terrorism. The more we delay, the more sophisticated international terrorism becomes in its strategies and tactics. We have recently re witnessed the events in Abuja, where the UN was attacked. Tanzania condemns this cruel act in the strongest terms possible and expresses solidarity with the, the people of Nigeria and the United Nations. It is clear that the struggle against terrorism must remain a high priority for the United Nations. Mr. President, it would be remiss of me if I concluded my speech without acknowledging and thanking the Secretary General for the honor he placed in me and my country, Tanzania. Last year, he formed a commission on information and accountability on women's and children's health. He appointed me and Prime Minister Stephen Harper of Canada to co-chair the commission. It was an honor to serve in the commission and I hope the recommendations we made will help advance the cause of or the noble work that we are all doing to save the lives of millions of women and children who are innocent by dying of causes that can be prevented. Mr. President, I end as I began, reaffirming our faith in the United Nations, a true embodiment of humanity. We dedicated ourselves to respect the values and principles enshrined in our charter, and we shall continue to play, as we have always done, in these first 50 years of our independence, a full, honest, and a constructive part in the work of the United Nations. Mr. President, I thank you for your kind attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the United Republic of Tanzania for the statement just made. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and I request protocol to escort His Majesty. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, and invite him to address the Assembly. <laughs> 